Ode to a Nightingale is one of John Keats's most important poems. So in summary, the speaker engages in a fantasy escaping his reality inspired by a nightingale. This poem is special. It is one of literature's most famous lyrical poems, meaning it focuses on the speaker's emotions in an imaginative way. The only time a nightingale is mentioned is in the title. However, the entire poem is about the nightingale and its nightly world. There are several allusions to Greek mythology in this poem. It is characteristic of romantic poets to take interest in mythology. This in particular is sometimes called Hellenism. In a Greek myth, Philomena was turned into a nightingale to help her escape being murdered by her rapist. What does this mean in the context of the poem? It is about escaping reality. A note is a form of ancient Greek song, generally to praise its subject. The meter is iambic pentameter. You will keep hearing this throughout your poetry course. It means there are five stressed syllables per line, so penta refers to five, and iambic means that every second syllable is stressed. So, for example, the word delay would be iambic, but the word peter uh, wouldn't. The rhyming scheme is also quite regular. On an existential note, Keats came up with the term negative capability. This means that the poet pursues artistic visions that give rise to uncertainty rather than aim to solve problems and answer questions. In the first few lines, the speaker is disoriented. He is comparing his feeling to being on opiates, things like morphine and heroin. In case you're wondering, this poem was written before Keats became seriously ill with TB. Lethe was a river in the underworld, and that is hell in Greek mythology. By drinking from this river, people were able to erase their memories. A dryad is a female tree spirit in Greek mythology. The speaker feels happy for the nightingale, who can sing away carefree. This almost religious approach to the forest, to nature in general, is characteristic of romantic poetry. The speaker is wishing for a wine that has been kept cool deep in the earth and embodies the serenity and generosity of nature. That will bring the speaker the feeling of being in a forest, away from his reality of worries and fretting. Here Keats talks about youth and confronts time that takes life away. So the theme of time will recur in Ode to a Grecian Urn. Back to reality. Thinking always leads to sorrow and tired despair. Beauty doesn't last, neither does love. Both are personified. It becomes obvious why the poet wanted to get away from it all, imagining himself under the influence of drugs or alcohol. The speaker isn't going to rely on the Greek god of wine, Bacchus, to get away from reality. Instead, he will fly away from it on the wings of his own poetry. Pegasus, also a creature in Greek mythology, was a winged horse and a symbol of poetry. The poem is full of references and allusions to Greek mythology, adding to its sophistication. It is night time, and the speaker finally feels he is together with the nightingale. The fact that F. Scott Fitzgerald used Tender is the Night as the title of one of his novels over 100 years after the poem was written speaks of how significant this poem really is in English literature. The queen and her attendants are a metaphor for the moon and the stars. Keats describes the forest without being able to see it. It's dark. This heightens the reader's sensual awareness, focusing on the olfactory sensations here. Keats manages to find the flowers intoxicating, full of dewy wine. The poem was written in Hampstead, which is part of modern-day Camden in London. Having described the smells, he focuses on the sounds. He compares this experience with death and finds it easy or easier than dealing with reality. Note that death is personified. The poem expresses a death wish. It will bring ease to him. The extent to which Keats glorifies death is fascinating. There isn't a hint of fear. It seems that death would bring pure pleasure and liberation. He is feeling sad and enjoying it. It is typical of romantic poetry. Passionate, fearless, and at odds with conventional norms. He notes that his death won't alter the life of the nightingale. It will still continue to sing. The nightingale transcends death. His song has been heard in ancient days, and he is hearing it now. There is a bittersweet irony here. 
Keats managed to transcend death too. We are studying his poems almost 200 years on, so he didn't fare much worse than the nightingale. He speaks directly to the nightingale. In poetry, this is known as an apostrophe, or a figure of speech in which the poet addresses an absent person, an abstract idea, or a thing. The concept of transcendence is important in romantic poetry. In the next few lines, the speaker refers to the Book of Ruth. It is part of the Old Testament. Ruth was forlorn in a foreign land, as was the nightingale who flew over the open waters of faraway seas. Back to reality, the only one forlorn is the speaker. He is now left without the nightingale. The nightingale flies away and the speaker is left disappointed. He is left wondering, was this a dream or maybe a hallucination? The rhetorical questions at the end of the poem call into question which of the two worlds is actual reality. You will find more notes on John Keats, other poets, the entire English course and other subjects too on 625points.com created by students who got straight A1s in their leaving cert.